Hi friends, welcome back. In this video, we are going to discuss practice interview question number 5. So, the question is, which of the following are considered as start point of a timing path? So, if you are visiting first time to this channel, I have already covered a chapter on timing path as a part of static timing analysis series. I will provide, provide the link of the timing path chapter in the description section of this video. So now let's concentrate on this problem. So here we have to find out what all can be a start point of a timing path. So here we just have to find out the start point of a timing path. We are not given any circuit at all. So now let's consider that we have a IP and our IP has one input signal as input one one clock signal and one input two signal why i am considering it like this you will see uh, as we uh, move ahead in this video so suppose there are two flip flops in the design and our input signal will go to the first flip flop then through some combinational logic it will go to the second flip flop and then the second flip flop output is comes as an output of our ip suppose this is our now the clock signal will go to both of the flip flops and now we have one another input signal input 2 which supports through some combinational logic it will be going as output to our output from our IP. Okay, so if we consider this as an IP then let's see what old timing paths are there in this IP. So as we have discussed already what all kind of synchronous timing paths can be present in IP here if you see then we have one timing path which is nothing but input to register so this is our one timing path then we have one timing path which is registered to register which starts from the clock pin of the first flip flop and ends at the data pin of the second flip flop so this is our path 2 then we have the third path which starts from the clock pin of the flip flop and ends at the output port of our design and then we have a fourth type of timing path which starts from our input port and ends at our output port so this is our fourth synchronous timing path so now if you have whatever big an ip is you will always see these four types of timing paths synchronous timing path so that is the reason why i have considered this a small ip uh, like this where i have just uh, considered the relevant logic through which we can explain what all timing paths can exist in an IP. if these four are the only timing paths in a design then what are the start point of these timing paths so if you see here let's assume this is our path one this is our path two this is our path three and this is our path four so for path one what is the start point of the timing path so the first path starts from the input port of the design and ends at the data pin of the flip flop so the start point is nothing but input port Now, for the second path, if you see the second path is starting from the clock pin of the flip flop and ends at the data pin of the second flip flop. So, for the second path, what is the start point? Clock pin. Correct. And for the third path, the third path again starts from the clock pin of the flip flop and it ends at the output port of our design. So, again, the clock pin is the start point. If you see for the path number 4, path number 4 starts from the input port of our design and ends at the output port of our design. So, what is the start point? Again, the input port. So, now let's see in the questions what they are asking. In the questions, they are asking which of the following are considered as start point of a timing path. So, now let's go one by one uh, of the options which are given to us. So, first option is D input of a register flow. So, this is the D input. So, D, D input for path 1 is if you see it is the end, end point. 
for the path 2 also it is the end point for path 3 we do not have any d input and for path 4 as well we don't have any d input of a register so for path 1 and 2 we have a d d point but if you see that d point is our end point of the path it is not the start point of a path correct so here we can see that this is not the correct option now let's see option number b clock pin of a register so if you see this is our clock pin and actually speaking there is a path which is starting from the clock pin of our flip flop so path 2 starts from the clock pin of the flip flop as well as path 3 also starts from the clock pin of the flip flop so clock pin of a register is definitely a start point of a timing path now let's see option C. Option C is saying output port of a design. So output port of a design can never be a start point. It is always an end point of a timing path. So path C is also not, also not correct. Let's see the option number D. Option number D is input port of a design excluding clock port. It's important point to note here is what D option is saying input port of a design excluding clock port. Okay. So these are the inputs of our design input 1 then clock and then input 2 these are the data signal and this is the clock signal and these both are data signal correct so for a data path we have to consider the data signal only so the input port of a design excluding clock port clock port can never be a start point of a timing data path okay clock port is basically a part of the clock path okay so what is the start point of a timing path the input port of a design input port of a designs are the start point of a timing path so option d is also correct so if you see here we have option b and then option d which are the correct option basically they are the real start point of a timing path so hope this is clear if you like this video please hit the like button also please do subscribe this channel so you will get all the notifications for my upcoming videos. Thank you very much.